very different way. And then I love this one. This is the teacher the first day of class with a list of, of acronyms saying, copy and study this list of text messaging spelling words. We will have a test tomorrow. <laughs> now, what I would have liked to have done is to blank out all of these and to ask you if you knew what they were. But everybody, of course, knows LOL. And most of these I think you might know. Do you know what POS means? This is one you have to know. POS means parent over shoulder. It's really important. P911, 911 is the emergency number. Parent getting close. You need to know that too. So, what are the generations doing with their media? And what I'm going to try to do is to give you an overview, and a lot of these numbers won't make any sense to you, it's the, the overall point that matters. We do a lot of research every year looking at the kinds of technology people are using, all the way from young children all the way up to older adults, and how much time they're spending using these technologies. And we ask some very simple questions. On a typical day, how many hours or minutes a day do you use the following? And we use very simple, and I'll show you a list in a minute, but we use very simple categories. We don't ask them if they do them alone or together, because we know they do them together. We're just looking for a pure amount of time that their brain is consumed with technology. And so for old people, like myself, it's about 13 hours a day. For Generation X, born in the mid-60s to the late 70s, it's up to about 15 and a half hours. For the net generation, born in the 80s, it's almost at 20 hours. You can see it peaks and quickly for the I generation at 20 and a half hours almost. And then even the young kids in Generation C are consuming about seven and a half hours. And I'm sure you're saying that's impossible because 20 hours, that means they don't sleep, which of course they don't anyway. But and we'll talk about that later if we get a chance about sleep and technology and waking up in the middle of the night to answer text messages and very important things like that in the life of a teenager. But what they're doing is they're multitasking these things. They're doing them together. But they all have preferences. And what's interesting is what do, each, what do members of each generation prefer to do? And so baby boomers, their top preference, their top amount of time spent is on television, obviously. Then on a computer, but not on the internet, just on a computer and then talking on the phone. When you get to Generation X, music becomes critical, being on a computer, and television is a distant third. Now you get into the younger generations, texting is number one, number one for the net generation. Music is number two, being online is number three. For I generation, texting is number one, music is the same, online is the same. Now you get down to Generation C, and TV regains its position as number one. I'll explain that a little bit later as how that happens, but if your kids are watching TV, how many of them are actually watching on a television set? Most of them are watching on some other device. And when they're on that device, they're doing many, many things all at the same time. So let's take a look at the little kids, the teenagers. First of all, this little baby says, no, Daddy, to reset your default, scroll down to preferences, then open the appropriate dialog box. <laughs> used to, I think used to think that was funny, but but have you seen videos of one-year-old children playing with iPads? Yes. If you put an iPad on the floor and allow a one-year-old child to crawl up to it, will they have to figure out how to do it? No, it's intuitive to them. This is the part of growing up with air. Technology is like air to them. They take to it intuitively. So this. I bring this up, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but these are the questions that we ask all the time. How many hours a day do you spend online? On a computer, but not online, sending and receiving email, chatting on IM, talking on the telephone, texting, playing video games, listening to music, and watching television. And you can see when we go from the younger children to the preteens, to the younger teenagers, to the older teenagers, the amount of time raises dramatically. But the activities also go up dramatically. And I just want to show you a few. With the younger kids, it's all about video games and television. As you get into the preteen years, it, they're starting to put in a little bit more time with things, and particularly video games in the preteen years. 
as you get into the early teens, it's all about everything. You can see an hour plus a day doing everything. But texting now is very important. They spend two hours a day texting, or probably thinking about texting, compared to only an hour a day talking on the phone. And when you get into the teenage years, it's almost two hours talking on the phone, but it's three and a half hours texting. And I'll give you some statistics in a minute. They also live in what I call techno-cocoons, meaning their room, their life, their space is about tech. We are obsessed with our technology also. We've done a lot of research on what people call multitasking, and I'd like you to take that word multitasking and throw it in the trash can because it's not real. We are never really multitasking. If you look at the brain, what we are doing is switching from one task to the other and back again and back again and back again. So we are not multitasking. It's not about multitasking. So we don't ask, do you multitask? We ask, if you had free time, say a half hour, which of the following things would you be doing? We give them that long list and a longer list, including eating, walking around, playing games, whatever. And we find that the baby boomers do about four and a half, four and three quarters. As you get to generation X, it jumps up to five and a half. As you get to the net generation, it jumps up to six. And you can see what happens with kids. Little kids, one to three year old, they do about two, two things at the same time. That's playing with toys, talking with mommy, usually. You get to the four to eight year olds, the, the older children, they're doing up to about four, about six, more, more. And it's sort of, if, if you go back and look, for the net generation, it peaked at about six. For the I generation older teens, it peaks at about seven. That means these kids, given free time, would choose to do seven things at the same time. Does that sound crazy? But do your kids do that? Do they have everything in front of them all the time? What happens if you try to force them to not do it? <laughs> Usually a fight ensues. <laughs> Daddy, you don't really understand me. You don't understand our world. This is a different world than you grew up in. I'm sure you've heard all of these. It's true. When they multitask slash task switch, here's what they do. When baby boomers choose to do things at the same time, television is number one. Music is number two. Being on the phone is three. Email is a distant fourth. Generation X, music is the most important thing they're doing. They're always plugged in in their iPod. Being online, TV, and email, now you get some differences. Net generation, music is first. Online and texting are two and three. I generation, texting, Facebook, and music. Those are their main things that they would prefer to do with free time. And this, these two young girls walking by say, with so little free time, you have to learn to multitask your TV watching, iPod listening, and texting with your homework. So, I'm going to ask you a question. Show of hands. Can you do these two at the same time? Can you check a website and listen to music? Yes. Pretty easy, right? Yes. That was an easy one. Can you read a book and listen to music? No. Yes. Yeah, fewer hands, right? Fewer. It's okay. I can't do that, by the way. Unless, unless by the way, it's very familiar music. Yes. I can talk about that, too. Um, can you eat and play video games at the same time? Well, first of all, most of you don't play video games, but it's very difficult to eat and play video games at the same time. Can you read a book and watch TV? No. Uh, your kids can. <laughs> or at least they think they can. Can you read a book, watch TV, and check Facebook all at the same time? <laughs> no hands, right? No hands whatsoever? If I had a room of teenagers, every single hand would be up. Of course I can do that and add in three more things. Why? <laughs> Well, let me talk to you a little bit about the brain. When we get distracted, we get distracted. We think of distractions as happening from our outside world. A bell rings, something vibrates, we see something off in the distance, we look over here, we're attracted by something. That's fine and dandy. There are external distractors, and the kids are externally distracted. They're also internally distracted, and those are the more insidious distractions. If I could drill a hole into a child, say 14 years old, in class while the teacher's lecturing, here's what I would hear. I wonder who texted me. I wonder what's going on on Facebook. I wonder who posted a status update. I wonder if anybody replied to the one I posted this morning. So they're internally distracting themselves. They may look fine on the outside. They may have absolutely no problems looking like they're focusing, 
They're looking straight at the teacher, and I'm thinking, did my daughter text back to me? I can't remember. I'm thinking inside. So how do you stop the internal distractors? The only way to stop the internal distractors is to give them a cue, a very clear cue that says, see this phone? You can't use that, but you will get to use it in 15 minutes. In 15 minutes, I will let you use it. What that does is it wipes out all that worry because they have no clue when they're going to get to use it. We're also doing this in families where, I, I don't know about you here, but in, in where I live, if you walk through a restaurant and people are having dinner, there are phones all over the table. I, I sometimes think there are more phones on the table than there are people sitting at the table. <laughs> and what that is, is it's a big distractor, right? Because the phone is, oh, I've got I to check, but I can't. That's not polite. But I really, so this is approach avoidance kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I promised I was going to sniper you with this. <laughs> I, by the way, I let my students text in class. I just tell them. Wait for the lecture when I tell you why it's lousy to text in class and why you'll fail my class if you text in class. But so <laughs> let's try a tech break in the family. Okay, so you're sitting down to dinner with your children, and trust me, you have the same problem. You have a Blackberry, you have an iPhone, you want to check your email from your work, you need to check in and make sure everything's okay. You're just as distracted internally. So you start by going, okay, everybody in the family, everybody check your phones. Last chance, check your phones, put them down on the table, turn them off. Turn them on silent. Now we have 15 minutes as a family to talk. Let's talk. Don't think about your phone. It's there. You'll get it in 15 minutes. Don't worry. You'll get it. It takes them a little while to get used to this. Then whoever is in charge, I would say the kids, but probably the parents, at 15 minutes, they yell, tech break. The kids get very excited, and they turn over their phone, and they turn it on, and they start checking it at their lightning speed. You know, they call this Nintendo thumb. I'm pretty sure that within about 20 years, kids are going to be born with big paddle-like thumbs from over-exercising their thumbs all day long. But they love it because then they check in, then they put their phones back down. And the, we're doing this in quite a few families. And what they're reporting is they're having better conversations with their kids. It works better for them. And then in the workplace, um, we're starting to do this. It's hard to get companies to allow us to do this. But we're starting to do this where you, <clears throat> you say, we have, a, we have a meeting now. Everybody check your phones. Put them down. Tech break in 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. People in the business world are even worse than kids. They have to check in every five seconds. But it all works because it's all about knowing how you think. If you know how your brain works, it will help you understand why you need to think about technology and then not.